Hi again folks, here we are again. Uh, this is a Hornby Class 142 Pacer in Northern livery. Uh, it was sent to me by a chap called Stephen, uh, who told me that it's uh, reluctant to start, sticks on points, uh, struggles on the curves, and is a bit noisy. Uh, so let's turn on the power. Well, yeah, you can see there it's got a, a bit of a pickup issue and uh, the drive wheels seem a bit rough. Um, yeah, so we'll get this to the bench and we'll see what's what. It's too big to go into the shed, so we'll just get straight to the bench. So, the 142 Pacer. Uh, I like these, um, despite all the issues. Uh, this is a, a later one than mine. Um, I'll just show you mine, actually. So this is my 142. Um, this is one of the earlier ones with the, the two power cars. Um, I have connected them up, hardwired them with a little plug. Um, but yeah, mine run, runs okay now, um, after a bit of fiddling. So this is a later one. It's got uh, the single power car. It's only got the, the one motor and drive wheels here with uh, traction tyres. And the other wheels are all conductive. And uh, the coupling um, has connectors to, to connect the power from the dummy car to the power car and I'm just noticing that the, the wires are broken there and there so that's why probably the main reason why this isn't running too well uh, it's quite an ingenious coupler this actually it's the same type of coupler as the as my one but it's got these contacts on it to uh, connect the power I quite like that actually it's a bit delicate but uh, yeah I think it'll work okay um, Soldering onto that is going to be iffy because the, the copper contact is sitting right on top of the plastic. So, yeah, be careful when soldering those wires back on. Just looking at this, there's a bit of fluff. The gears look very dry. There's a lot of fluff inside there. Um, so, yeah, I think it probably just needs a clean up. Um, sort those broken wires and it'll probably be okay. Huge amounts of fluff in there. So I thought this has been getting run on the old carpets. So I think all we need to do with the dummy car is solder that wire back on and give the wheels and the, the uh, pickups a clean. Probably going to be the same I think, just get that wire out, solder it back on. We'll get into here, uh, get some lubrication in there because that gear is very dry. Um, and again clean up all the, the wheels and the pickups. So, let's get into here first of all. Until that comes out, is it going to let me in here or am I going to have to take the... Right, okay, that's fine. So I'll get the monkey brush in here first of all. It's an awful lot of black dust, which looks like it's been coming off the gears. Um, and that's possibly a lack of lubrication. Right, I'll put a little bit of grease on the one gear. Just work that in. See so if we can get a spot of oil just in the bearing at the back of the motor. So these wheels have got uh, traction tyres and pickups. <laughs> yeah, I know people say that, uh, you know, the idea is it picks the current up through the flange of the wheel, but, you know, your, your flanges aren't always in contact with the track. Um, it really is just a daft idea. There's just no point. All right, let's see if we can get slotted back in. Get some oil on this axle. Okay, 
Okay, we'll see what that sounds like on the layout when we run it, but uh, I think it's maybe okay. Uh, right, okay, let's clean these wheels and we'll uh, fix this broken wire. These are really, really dirty. Yeah, wire brush. So I used the wire brush there because the, uh, the wheels are quite badly scored. Um, That'll hopefully sort that. We'll get some fresh oil in there. And we shall see if we can get that soldered back on. That's better. Okay. So hopefully that's that sorted. Right. So we'll look at the other car. So I think we're doing the same thing here, just cleaning the wheels and fixing that broken wire. Just get all the fluff out. And we'll get some Fresh oil on the axles. Right, that's that soldered on. So, if I connect these up, I see a problem. I see a problem. There's a wee bit of a problem with this contact. It's uh, a little plastic rivet has given up. Um, it's possibly when I've been soldering that, that little plastic rivet's just melted because it just came off. Um, and that's the problem with uh, soldering right next to plastic like that. Um, so yeah, I think we'll have to try a bit of super glue and just hope for the best. It was always a risk soldering that when there's a plastic there like that. But let's see. Okay, it's on. We'll let that set and then we'll see how robust it is. So just to clarify what happened there, these little contacts are uh, held on with a little plastic uh, rivet, if you like, a little peg. And uh, you know, you can't remove the contact without breaking the peg. Um, and of course, applying solder heats the copper contact up and it just melted the little peg. So I've super glued this contact on and hopefully that'll do. Fortunately, the other one soldered okay. But you can see even then there's still a bit of melting around about the contact. Um, and the peg has started to melt, but I got away with it, but not on that one. It's just uh, not designed to, <laughs> to be uh, resoldered that at all. Uh, okay. Let's see. Moment of truth. Does this work? So that goes under there, that goes in there. That in contact, it is. What happens if I stick a battery on these wheels? Uh -huh. So it works. If we pull that apart, that seems okay. Put it back together again. Yeah. It's actually not making as much contact as it should, but that's probably quite a good thing because um, when it does contact, it's not putting any stress on the glued joint. It's just making contact. That seems to work. So, let's go and put this on the layout and see how it goes. Okay then, let's see how it runs.
Okay, so there we are, that's that sorted. Uh, all that was really wrong with it was the wires connecting to the contacts on the coupling were broken and uh, the fields and pickups were a bit dirty and it just needed a bit of lubrication. Uh, it does seem to slow down a bit going down the curves. Uh, off camera I had to fiddle around with the fuel spacing because uh, that will usually help with that issue but uh, no, nothing made any difference. Um, you know, I think this thing just has a lot of uh, inherent drag. You know, all the fields have got uh, pickups. You've got two little drive wheels with traction tyres each, that one little motor. Um, and I just think when it hits the, you know, that slightly increased resistance going around the curve, it just slows down. Um, and there's maybe not much can be done about it. Uh, I tried, as I say, fuel spacing wider, narrower on, on both dummy and power car. Didn't make any difference, really. Um, what it certainly runs much better with the power car uh, pulling rather than pushing. Um, quite quite a marked difference there. So that's uh, one thing to bear in mind if you have one of these. You know, run it with a power car in front. Uh, you know, my one four two doesn't really have uh, the same problems because it's uh, it's got uh, no traction tires, four drive wheels, two motors. So it's a bit of a different animal. Um, but this later version does have uh, a better pickup configuration. Um, so I think Hornby had the right idea and the changes that they made, but uh, yeah, they certainly didn't get it right. Uh, there's, there's a lot of improvements you could make to this. Uh, I had a bit bother re-soldering the, the wires to the coupling. Um, you know, soldering a wee bit of copper held onto some plastic with a tiny little plastic rivet is very tricky. And uh, unfortunately, the plastic rivet melted. Um, you know, having little uh, push-on plugs to attach to the wires, uh, to plug onto the contacts would have been a better idea um, than any soldering would have been off the plastic. But uh, never mind, got it working and it seems seems to be fine. But by all accounts, the real thing was uh, fault with problems as well. So there you go. Right, okay, I'll get this packed up and send back to Stephen. Catch you later, folks.